So welcome back. We're going to continue on our Character 360 rig. Uh, I did realize that there's one line we forgot, which is on the front of the jacket and the lower half, because we have the two halves of the jacket coming together. So our jacket left, our jacket right, and then they are mixing in to our lower body comp. So we have the two jackets happening, but because of the shape of the jacket and the way the artwork is, what will be easier to control is to have a line like I plan to do on the top. So we'll just have one torso piece and we'll have a separate line. So we'll have a line for the bottom, a line for the top. So with that, we'll just grab our line tool that we're going to need. And with the jacket right select there, we're just going to go find an element. And it added that element and attached it. We don't need it attached there. And it is going to go on to the lower body, probably somewhere. We have to figure out. So jacket left, jacket right, and then we want it under the belt. So let's see which is which. Here is the jacket. And then that is the belt comp there, so that will make sense to put it there. So we can give this a name. This will be jacket lower line. Close that out, and it is just going to be, in this case, we'll zoom in a little bit more so I can see, make sure I'm on my line art layer, and I just draw a line. I'm effectively connecting it to there, so I'm going to end it somewhere in the belt area. I'm not going to run it all the way up so that as I move the belt around, I don't have to worry about it, and now we have that line configured. So with that, what we're going to do is add a, with this I will add a deformer onto it. So we can just do a simple line deformer as part of it. So now we have that line deformer for being able to adjust it. And then we'll have our jacket peg that we will attach and relocate probably to about there so that it's maybe not quite on the same spot since that's where the line starts. So now we have the line for the lower jacket. With that I see we'll just make this backdrop a little bit bigger to encompass that. We can put those up there. So that completes out our lower body with the waist. So now it's time to move into adding in the upper body. Oh, well, actually, one thing we'll probably want to do to this to just make it easier to access and control is when I'm trying to animate and select that line, that gets a little bit tricky. Let's just turn off. We don't need to see the deformer. But it gets a little tricky to select that line. So what I want to do over here is we'll go open GL controller. Actually, it's just OGL controller, but it's an open GL controller. So now we get our open GL controller for that. So we're going to be able to now control it the same way that we have our other OGL controllers. So let's go find, where's my OGL comp? It's over here. So again, we drag into the green port or the peg port of it. And we'll just give ourselves some more room to work and put that onto our OGL comp. It, attach that into it. Now, give me my window back. Let 
and that oh I hit space bar so I went to the end of time and there now we have that so now it's just going to be a matter of let's rename these and keep hitting space at the wrong time with the wrong window active I just want to review with my label what size I thought it was six that I was using on it so we'll go here go into the label set the size to six and this is uh, lower lower jacket line and let's go here under controller turn on setup mode I don't want to use a circle, I'm going to use a square for it because that makes more sense. Let's shrink it down to, let's try 0 0.3, 0 0.2, that's better. Attach that next to it. I forgot, we need to make those alpha 128. This is the 255, 128, there we go. Okay, so that sets that up. And now with our setup mode, move the text, we'll move the square over here so that we can select it, turn off setup mode. I can go back with my animation tool grab and we can see that selects it and we can move it around so perfect we have things configured all right so that takes care of that and cleans that up nicely so what we now want to do is to set up a upper body section where we're going to have the torso we're going to have the front of the shirt we'll do the neck we may leave the collar, uh, still working on some systems on how we might be able to set up the collar so that we're able to actually animate to not just snap between the views, but then we can transition between the views. So we have to look at how this outer edge becomes this inner edge here. So we do a flip with it, but if we just do a standard flip, the line effectively disappears when we are getting at that full 180 degree rotation doing the kind of the horizontal flip so i'd have to be animating a line separately from the shape so it's a few more pieces than i want to deal with when we're first setting up the rig so i think we might just set up the character without a the collar right now and that so we can get some of these other parts done the hat and the arms and then come back and work on the collar so off to the torso so with this a uh, couple things what we might want to do for a little bit of uh, house cleaning here we'll just go into our node view and full screen it so we can see everything that's going on here so now, what I'm going to do is, if I look here, we have our hips and the belt buckles and all of that. So I am going to just highlight and select all of those pegs and then just hit Command P to give those a peg. And now we will just call this our waist peg. And now we have our waist peg and our two legs. So we're down to three. What we want to do is just set up another peg here. This peg is going to be my uh, lower body peg. Oh, I don't want that. There we go. Lower not bossy, body peg. Okay, so that creates that peg and it's going to link into the one leg, the other leg, and finally 
connect down onto the hips. And the advantage of now setting that up is I can now select that peg. It selects it right here. I can close that. Oh, um, looks like we have one thing that I didn't get into it, uh, the butt crease which is going to be under the waist, whoops. So we'll put that over there, the waist, okay. So what I wanted to do with this, and this is why I did it, is to clean up so when I'm looking at the timeline, I can just have a single uh, layer. So as I want to start moving some things around as we're testing out some of the positions, that it makes our selection process so much easier is then we'll have an upper body peg, a head peg, and then subgroups within it the same way we do with our waist and our legs and our arms. And then a whole character peg and a scene peg and pegs and pegs and pegs and comps and comps and comps. So we've got all kinds of fun stuff and it does become a spaghetti mess when it's all done. And that's just kind of part of the game and we just learn to roll with it. But that now gave me way more control over my situation. Um, I probably should, as long as I'm doing this, go and set, actually, the waist peg that works. So I'm going to just slip that in. Lower body peg. Uh, lower body peg, I can decide do I want to rotate it around there, same as the waist, or do I want to maybe put it more kind of at what would be the belly button, which is what I think I want to do. So I'm going to just pull up the waist peg, or the lower body peg there, so we're kind of rotating around. I mean, we could even use the belt buckle as kind of our point of rotation. They're all good possibilities. So now what we need to do is to move over so we get some free space here, and we're going to add in the upper body. So working on the upper body here, just going to click and go comp. So now we have a comp for it. And then we'll grab an element. And I know I need an upper body. I'm going to need the shirt front. So shirt front. And then I need a neck piece here. So that's going to, oh, and then we'll need the shirt line. So every time I hit return, it pulls up my list of nodes, and then I can just hit enter to select, and it selects the previous one that I've made. So that's a handy way of setting those out. So now we'll just start naming things. Uh, upper jacket line. And then this is going to be the jacket. Neck. Oh. Neck. And so we have the jacket, the neck, the upper jacket line, and then I my final one right now will be my shirt front. And this is going to, we'll just name this right now as our upper body. Oh. Upper body. So I find it's useful to set those up. So I know shirt front will be in front of the jacket and the jacket line and the neck and the neck will be in front of the shirt front so I can set those up there. So use the horizontal alignment to space those out and now we have upper body. If I have all those connected hold down alt or option click it joins it together. Now I'm just going to full screen this momentarily so I can select this and get to it a little bit easier. So I now know we have our OGL comp there. We can use one for everything or maybe I'll have a second OGL comp. We'll have a lower body and an upper body one. We'll figure it out when we get there. 
but now to select my scene because I have my thing selected if I hold down alt or option and now click on my composite it now adds it to my scene and it added it where I clicked within that composite so now we can see the artworks on the bottom then we have that going there and now we have our character comp here which is actually where I want to add it instead so we'll have our there is our lower body here so that should be upper body lower body and let's see the OGL comp is down here it's just attached to the scene we could also add it into our character as part of it which is where we probably want to do that so now we have our character everything going in here there's the scene separated out the next step will be to add in a backdrop so let's set these here highlight go to our menu insert backdrop and we'll just choose we had purple so we'll grab the next one on the list blue and this will be our jacket upper and we might end up renaming it torso or something but that gives us at least a starting point so we have the layers we're working with there pulled up her body down with that we might with these lines here I think end up we're just going to cut those temporarily and then add in a composite and that composite is on the wrong side put this here and we'll just call this jacket and so I can select those hold down alter option click select here alter option click and that joins it back in so that now gives us a little bit more control we might end up separating the neck out like that so it's separate from the jacket parts because it just would make a little bit more sense organizationally so with that we're going to add in a couple of interesting features here in addition to our base things but the first thing I want to do is let's go and add in a few more colors so we will click to add in a new color and I'm going to drag over and we'll first add in our shirt and then add in so we already have the jacket we have the shirt we have our line I'm going to just add in my collar so it's there for when I need it now we have two skin tones we have a skin shadow and then I have a base skin tone which we can see is lighter and so we have the jacket shirt skin skin because the neck is darker than the chin so we use that shadow color we can also see there's a little shadow section kind of around the eyes kind of two cheek area shadows that add some definition to the character as well uh, as long as we're adding in colors we might as well just continue that process and do a little bit more so this character only has one color for hair so we're just going to do one color for hair here and I'm going to zoom in a little bit here for this and add a plus for that and we have come on 
bracer. So we have the bracer color, which is one color, and then we have two colors for the gem on it. So then we'll pull in color for the gem. And our final color that we need right now is going to be our gem highlight. And that should take care of the bulk of the colors that we need to complete our character. And Okay, it just couldn't look like it was spelling things wrong. It just can't show all of them when we're using swatch mode like this. All right, switch back to our lines. Make sure we're on our line art layer. Go into our nodes here. And what I'm going to do in, as I look at this is I am going to... Um, start out I think with the neck and then after the neck do then the shirt and then the jacket or then the line and then finally finish with the jacket because otherwise if I do the jacket it obscures what I need to see so we'll jump into our neck and grab our line tool for the neck here and one thing I'm going to do with the neck is extend this neck down because Oh, come on. If we look at the view here, we can see where we get this line coming down on the neck, and this is where we're going to use an image switch node so we can switch which version of whether we're using the uh, shirt to cut that line or not. So I want the neck to extend into the head, and I'm going to just bring the line down for the neck. Now, what I don't want to do is, as I do this and bring it down, I can bring the line across with it. And I don't remember if on my tool properties, if it's set up with snapping, it is good. So snapping is handy while we're going to do some of this work. So I can snap it across, snap it across, and snap it across here down command or control and create the curve for the neck. Now the one thing I've noticed on this model is the curve I guess it does change a little bit so I think what I'm going to do is add in one additional uh, element node here and okay did it actually just put it where I wanted it to I, well okay good we can name it this will be um, neck shirt and I, I do think when I look at the neck shirt one thing that I'll be able to do with that and it's in front perfect okay is with the neck shirt instead of having the line here I think we're gonna we'll be in good shape with this because we'll have our solid color here um, so we're going to get rid of the line on the neck that we drew there so let's select that delete it so we just have a box and now with the neck shirt if we look at this it's still it's pretty much the same kind of curve as we look at the curve on the neck so we could just have a, a big curve and just rotate it without having to mess with the deformer on it that would probably be the fastest way to animate it so with that what I'm going to do is set up a bigger 
curve to have a little bit more to work with. So we'll set it out to here. Hold down Command or Control, pull down to where the middle would be with it. Because if it appears that we need to use a deformer, we can go back and add in a deformer. And now I can simply draw these pieces over. And if we just cut this, it's going to be cut by the neck. So that gives us the two parts that we need for the neck. So I do find it can be useful when we're doing this to set things up um, with using all of our lines first and then go into the process of adding in the colors because once we add the colors we can't really see what we're doing based on our original character art that we are working with. So that gives me the shirt front, the line for the jacket, because it sits below the shirt front we can give ourselves a little bit more leeway with it and we can pull it down to here. So it, did it go? I didn't, it disappeared. So I'm going to pull about to the middle of the belt buckle. Okay, so that gives me something to work with. And now I go into the jacket. So now as we look at the jacket, when we're animating this, so I find that if we build a curve at the bottom here that starts kind of at these points, and then that's where the curve is, that's going to really kind of give the greatest you know, then we can rotate the character. It's like doing a circle joint. So we'll go across to that point over right there at the edge of the belt. Hold down Commander Control and put in a curve for it. And because it sits behind, we don't worry about having it extend and show. So now with this, Just looking at the lines here, we'll probably draw it solid all the way up and then we'll be covering with a shoulder patch that we're going to have to use or even just the shoulder artwork will extend into it just based on the different views when we look at it. So I don't know if this line, I have to worry about ending that line, but at least for creating the color art it's going to be useful though it does seem the shoulder wants to go to that point right here. So we, it almost wants to go to that point right there. And if we end right here and then we adjust that point. Okay, it didn't give me a good snap. Let's go right here. There we go. Now it attaches better. And I think it'll be better to align these or to adjust them. With our select tool afterward. So now this line as we go across the shoulder can see we get that curve so what I really want to do is to set up this line here snap it in and then start to put a little bit of curve in and that gives me the starting shape that I need and then we'll need to clean that up using a deformer when we go between our different views so now like this point right here if I hold down alter option it gives me my handles and then I can hold down option to move it and adjust it. Now this is where I need to turn off snapping so that it's not so it gives me a little bit more flexibility as I'm adjusting that line. So here I'm going to again turn that into a rounded point 
And what we might want to do is if I hold down Command or Control, it gives me that additional handle to work with, or point, it inserts that point so that I can adjust my shape. So on these body contours, setting it up with just looking at what is present in the artwork here. And it's something where we might end up wanting to, or needing to, delete that segment and delete this segment as well, but we'll leave them in place initially. And this is where I'm going to just add another point here, because that point now gives me greater flexibility and control over that curve of it, though we will end up applying a deformer to it. So we might delete these lines here after we have created our color art, but leaving them in place allows us to create the color art and be in good shape. So now I'm going to create color art for the jacket. Jacket line doesn't need color art. Shirt front needs some, well, There's my neck, color art, shirt front, color art, and shirt neck, color art. So now we should have color art for everything. We can see the blue line showed up. Switch over to my color view. So this is now shirt, and we can grab our paint bucket and fill. So now we can fill that and go into our other node, shirt front, fill that, go into the neck, switch into our, uh, the neck was skin shadow, so we'll fill that with our shadow skin. And then we go back and grab the jacket, finally in. The jacket didn't get color art. So the jackets, line art, create color art, go to our, there we go. So now it's been filled. So now if we click off, click over here, we can see where we have our different layers. So now what we want to do is we want to start to set up some of our nodes that we're going to work with here to clean things up and make this better. So the first node, that we want to work with on this is we're going to grab a cutter and with that cutter we're going to well let's just jump into our library here speed up so we don't have to recreate all the little things that we're looking for go into rigging and go grab a copy of art layers and just drag it out so that we have them handy, might as well, as long as we've gone through the process of creating that. All right, so now I need an auto patch here. So the auto patch, uh, let's see, of the, neck is going to not go there, it's going to cut the shirt okay so now I cut it, that's good now let's pull that over there Align that up so we can better see what is happening. So now that we're doing that cut, what we want to do is on the next shirt, it's showing up there. Now on my line art, I want to go in onto the neck. What I don't want is that bottom piece, so let's delete that. And now we can see 
We go back here, we get our neck showing up inside the front of the shirt. We can see that we have the lines showing there that we want, but when we're in our front view, we don't want those lines. So now at that point, we want the lines for the neck here to be cut. So we're going to need another cutter here. And with this cutter that we're going to work with, we're going to use a new node and well, one, I will need an empty element node, but I'm also going to need an image switch node. So the way that the image switch node is going to work is it's going to determine which item is going to do our cutting. So for the neck, we're either going to cut it by the auto patch of the shirt front, or we're going to cut it by and we have to move that into here and then redraw that back in. So we can see there is the shirt front. Oh, um, oh, but now that it's separated. So when I built this previously, I didn't separate out the, um, the shirt and the neck. I just had that as one, so then this worked. So let's just rethink this for a moment. So I guess before we add in the image switch and worry about that, um, we also need to, I realized a uh, wrong cutter here. I, need, I don't want to invert cut, just normal cut. Uh, so if I cut with the auto patch of the shirt front, we can see that those lines disappear and the neck just merges directly with it. So then we would just have the collar of the shirt coming in and it would be clean. But instead of cutting with that, if I just cut with an empty node, effectively it's doing nothing. So if we want to be able to keyframe that difference, what we do is we use an image switch node and we can see where it has a port index. And what we're able to do is switch between ports and we can choose you know, port zero or port one on it. Now, this node here, we can just make so that um, we'll attach it so it just stay, it, well, I mean, it has no artwork, so it doesn't even need to peg or anything. It can just float here, but we want to attach it to a peg so then when we collapse things, it gets buried with it, but it doesn't really need its own peg for it. So with the image switch, when I look at it, what's here is I can see where it says port zero and it's now cutting it. But if I go and change that value to one, it now updates what's there. Go back to zero, it's there. So we're able to switch it back and forth using this switch node. And the good part about it is it's keyframeable. So if I select the node and press zero in the timeline, I'll see that there's a little plus here. And I'll see there's port index right there. And then this is a value that I can just type in and anywhere I type it in in the timeline, it's going to then take effect and be part of it. So if I, at one point it says one, it changes it. At the next point it says zero changes it. So it works the same as using uh, drawing substitutions where the drawings, when we look at with drawing substitutions, it will actually show us numbers. So if we're looking at a layer that say a hand that has 10 different drawings, we'll see zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we'll see that number show up next to it. Usually it just shows up in blue right next to it. So we can see which drawing right now we're looking at drawing one. For the upper jacket line. If I go and look at my drawing substitutions, we'll see that is number one. So it tells us what we're looking at. So it's the same that, yeah, when we do drawing subs, it changes it. When we change our port index, it changes it. So that makes it effectively keyframeable. We can't tween it, 
but it does allow us to set it up nicely in our timeline. So now this gives us the start of setting up our character with its shirt and what we can do with this and that we're going to need to pull this off. Uh, let's see, we have our jacket line here and we need to add in our OGL controller for it and that just messed things up. Um, and the OGL controller, we don't want it to go there. So let's go, where's our other OGL comp here with it? So we can attach it to that comp. So this right here, if I just select it and then hold down Option or Alt, it adds it to it. So now it attaches that in. And if we look here, Oh, I put the wrong, I put it in the blue port. The art for this is what will show up, but just having the line isn't really helping. So now what I want to do is just essentially repeat what I did for the other one here. So we know that we want to go down to point two. I'm going to use a square again for it because that makes sense. We'll go into our setup mode and I'm going to drag this one up to there. Label, this will be upper jacket line six and 128. And then we can just move that over there, line that up. So now we're able to select that significant, oh, and I always got to remember when we're done, go back under and turn off setup mode. Now, if you don't want to use setup mode, um, okay, did we not, oh, did I change the wrong value? That's weird. Six, 255, 128, why is it so much darker? One twenty-eight, two fifty-fives and zeros for the label there. One twenty-eight, two fifty-five, and okay. Um, oh, it's a lower jacket. I don't know why our alpha shows up here as gray. It made that transparent. We're just going to leave it at 128 because we know that should work and I'm not quite sure why, but so we've got our OGL controller set up so we can move the upper jacket. We did turn off setup. Let's verify that. Okay, setup's turned off. So if I now select this, we can see it selected it and we can now move it. Now what we want to do for all of these items is give them pegs. And we'll take care of the positioning of those pegs in a moment. Now on this line here, I know that I know I will want to put a deformer on it. We'll use a curve deformer once again. So I'll just start drawing from the 
bottom, draw back in from the top. So that now gives me the control of what I need for that particular node. Uh, the shirt front here, I know I want to put a deformer on that. We're going to switch over to the shirt front. I'm going to start out and just put in a corner point here. Actually, now we're going to drag and then drag back because we will want to be able to reshape that. I know I'll need a point here, here. So we're going to need a couple points along the way. So we do short drags on these points to so move them through. Click, drag back, drag back. So we're always just kind of dragging back, trying to keep it short enough. Get to the end, hold down Alt, and now holding down Alt, I can adjust all of my corners so that they move and behave correctly for it. So now we have that deformer in place. Neck and neck shirt don't really need deformers I don't think so we're going to just leave them off for now if we realize we need a deformer as we're working then we will go and add that in so we'll pull these down just select all of these so it's nice to try and organize your nodes a little bit as you set things up make it easier to see. So now if I go and grab those nodes, it just gets everything aligned a little bit better. Here, so now we have kind of the torso. So with that, we'll add a peg to that, and then that peg we will refer to as torso P. Next, we'll want to grab our rotate tool and just align some of these. Pegs. So we'll set the next shirt just Right, I think right at that crease is where I want it. And then for the neck, we'll put it at the base of the neck. And then the shirt front will all just go at the belly button, shirt jacket line. Oh, shirt front should be up here. Neck shirt, neck shirt, front, jacket line, and now finally the jacket. That makes sense to keep more at the belly. So we're rotating around that. And that's going to probably end up being the torso. So knowing that, I'm going to just set that so that's telling me they're sharing kind of the same place. So that sets up the first part of working with our torso. Uh, I think we'll work on the arms and head next. The final thing we will tackle on the whole character will be the collar because that has some weird warping and it's going to take some finessing if we want to be able to interpolate any of our tweens. Good luck and happy rigging.